in American history. Our Pete Montine is just outside that facility. Pete, 2.9 million uh, doses that will be headed out. Do we know how long it'll take to get those out and when we could expect the next uh, shipment of uh, additional doses? Well, you know, Victor, we have heard from Operation Warp Speed that the trucks here will carry these uh, vaccine deliveries to distribution hubs for FedEx and UPS. In many instances, those are going straight to 600 individual locations, hospitals, pharmacies, CVS, and Walgreens. But Operation Warp Speed says many of those places will not actually receive the shipments until tomorrow morning, the bulk of the shipments arriving on Tuesday. You know, this is a massive moment and a massive movement project. I've been here all week. This is the most uh, action we have seen here on the backside of Pfizer's Kalamazoo facility, a sprawling complex that we know is critical to this vaccine distribution process. Vaccine arrived here late last month, and now it is officially going out. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been saying this all morning, uh, that uh, these are time-sensitive and also physically sensitive packages because these COVID-19 vaccines um, from Pfizer and BioNTech must be kept at nearly minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And Pete, I, I mean, I think you were reporting on this, that um, some airlines have even done dry runs or test flights, I should say, um, to simulate the conditions when these packages are flown to its destinations um, and to make sure that they would be able to stabilize uh, these vaccines via flight. FedEx and UPS called this a, a coordinated set of maneuvers that they have been practicing. In fact, they have been doing this for years. It's really what FedEx was founded on, according to one of the heads of the company. You know, the temperature here is so crucial. We know the Pfizer vaccine needs to be negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And this really relies on something called cold chain storage. So the vaccine is packed in dry ice, 50 pounds of dry ice in each individual package here at the Pfizer facility just outside of Kalamazoo. It comes down the assembly line, goes into these trucks. These are actually refrigerated tractor trailers that helps keep the vaccine cold while in transit. And then airlines have and uh, cargo companies like FedEx and UPS have uh, large freezer facilities to help keep that vaccine cold while it's in transit. The hope is, though, that that is just a pit stop on the way to getting this vaccine to these 600 facilities starting tomorrow morning. All right, our Pete Montine is there outside of the uh, facility in Portage. Again, a lot of pictures inside. Uh, and we heard from uh, Dr. Abdul El Sayed just a, a few moments ago, just the uh, medical miracle of what's happened here in less than a year, the development of a vaccine far below the previous record uh, development time of about four years. Uh, now this COVID-19 vaccine development from Pfizer and BioNTech, we know that Moderna is also applied for emergency use authorization uh, to continue to uh, offer these vaccines across the country. Uh, breaking news will continue continue now as we uh, cover the beginning of the largest mass vaccination in American history. This is CNN Breaking News. And it is Sunday, December 13th. Good morning to you. I'm Victor Blackwell. Good morning, everyone. I'm Amaral Walker in for Christy Paul. We are following breaking news. The U.S. on the verge of the largest vaccination effort in U.S. history. At any moment, the CDC director expected to formally accept an advisory committee's recommendation of Pfizer and BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccine. These are live pictures as the distribution is about to get underway. And uh, that CDC acceptance would allow the mass vaccinations to begin as soon as tomorrow. And we're watching the first shipments uh, here on your screen getting ready to roll out of Pfizer's facility in Portage, Michigan. Millions of doses stored at incredibly low temperatures uh, will soon make their way across the country at this uh, surge that we're seeing in new cases, in deaths, in hospitalizations in this pandemic, the U.S. Uh, surpassed 16 million coronavirus uh, confirmed cases yesterday. It took about four days to add the latest 1 million cases to the total count. The number of people fighting COVID-19 in the hospital right now, a record high for the seventh straight day. We have reporters ready to cover every angle of the story. Let's begin with CNN's Diane Gallagher at Ford International Airport in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We've been saying this is a highly complex uh, logistical mission that is underway right now, Diane. 
Uh, that's right. And, and, and those images that you're seeing of the beginning of the packing of those vaccines into those distribution trucks, those cargo trucks to get on the road and then eventually for many, most of those vaccines, bring them to an airport like this one here, Ford Airport in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and then get them out to the facilities, to the first responders, to the assisted living facilities, to the government facilities that need those vaccines and are in line to get them first. Now, uh, what we're anticipating happening a little later this morning is we'll begin to see these cargo flights uh, taking off from airports like this one with those vaccines. Uh, once this sort of chain of custody begins and uh, those, those trucks leave that Pfizer facility about 45 minutes down the road from here. Now, Ford Airport was notified ahead of time they've been planning for about a month that they are likely going to see some of that vaccine shipment activity but a lot of the security is involved in this uh, they, they, they don't want to talk too much about everything ahead of time because of the importance of this procedure now this is an intricate and, and difficult logistics process because of just how sensitive these packages of vaccines are on top of the fact that we've discussed over and over again this is super cold storage we're talking about around negative 100 degrees fahrenheit they have to be packed and kept in and so uh, those different carriers like ups and fedex have talked about the links they've gone to and the technology they're using to maintain uh, uh, surveillance of those vaccines. Uh, FedEx talked about uh, different sensors that, that not only can monitor the location of those vaccine shipments at all time, but also make sure that they aren't losing any of that cold storage. Now, on top of that, you've got to deal with the extreme amount of dry ice that's in these packages as well. I cannot stress what a sensitive operation this is. And so uh, airports like this one that have been preparing need things like cargo space. They need facilities, uh, extra long runways and large runways, wide runways that can handle these cargo planes to make sure there's no sort of issues. But even airports that have not been prepared uh, for these vaccine shipments have been told by the FAA, get ready just in case. Be prepared to add priority to any sort of uh, shipments that might be coming in via ground or if there's something that causes a plane to be delayed or diverted to make sure that each of these flights all of these ground shipments take priority. That is what is key here, Amra and, and, and Victor, uh, making sure that this, this very difficult, very precise logistics operation doesn't have any sort of interruption uh, and, and trying to make sure that every single step happens in the manner it is supposed to. There is very little room for error here, but there have been dry runs and much preparation uh, for this historic moment. Uh, if you could talk more about the tracking of these uh, these packages to make sure that uh, the facility and, of course, uh, the local governments uh, and, and hospitals know when they're coming, where they're coming, uh, and, and UPS and FedEx's cooperation to make sure that there is that surveillance, as you said, of, of these all-important vials. Sure thing. And, and, and FedEx has talked about sort of a, a newer technology that they're using with these sensors that, again, not only monitor the temperature and, and, and can make sure that that is adequate, but can in real time keep track of these vaccine shipments. And part of it is because there is such a small window to get them to these locations. This has to be done very quickly and of course very efficiently uh, without dropping temperature or losing that chain of custody. And so uh, they're using the sensor technology to continue feeding that information back to them so they have consistent eyes on where the location of these, these shipments are, these packages are. Uh, UPS has talked about their Bluetooth technology that they're using as well. Uh, this really is a collaboration of, of, of Look, technical prowess that they're trying to employ here to make sure that 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 nothing goes wrong to start with because just simply getting these vaccines from point a to point b uh, takes almost a small army of people who are working together and just the, some of the the most recent technology they've been able to employ here so they're going to be getting readings back there uh, through fedex and as well as those who are expecting that package so they can know when to be there, what's going on. FedEx, in fact, talked about the fact, uh, their, their vice president, that they delayed sort of these shipments until beginning today because they wanted to make sure that the facilities that would be accepting the vaccines 
we're all well staffed and ready. And so you have a better likelihood of that happening on Monday than say Sunday in the middle of the night. And so they tried to time this out to make sure that there would be uh, adequate staffing to handle these shipments once they get to their designated locations, Victor. So many preparations and dry runs, a, a lot at stake here. Diane Gallagher, thank you very much. Let's bring in CNN contributor Dr. Abdul 